have a guest today, right? Okay, so I said this to you in an email, but we had like the universe aligned to bring you here today. So we did like a Grammy project ahead of the Grammys and we checked out all the choral nominees. And then the choir voted because we figure if the Grammy Academy can vote, so can we. Amen. Um, yes. And so then after the Grammys, we started checking out other winners. And so we watched the video of your Grammy winning song. Oh my gosh. And then you emailed like less than an hour later. And so in the morning, you were this like hypothetical kind of imaginary figure so to all of us. <laughs> yes. And then by the afternoon, there was a chance that you were going to get to come and we were going to get to meet you. So I think we're all pretty excited about that. Yes? yes. Absolutely. I love that. So um, she just came in, like walked in the building. So let's tell her a little bit about who we are. So many of the people that you see here are in mixed choir. And mixed choir is going to have a concert choir, an SATB ensemble. So raise your hand if you're in mixed choir. And mixed that's choir is tenth, volunteer, not audition based. Correct. Mm -hmm. And 10th through 12th graders. And then um, the kiddos in their jackets are that's some of our vocal jazz. So raise your hand if you're in vocal jazz. Very cool. Okay. And vocal jazz is an extracurricular group. Cool. And they meet for about 45 minutes, about once a week. Except lately, when they haven't had a rehearsal since December, except to say hello to you. Great. So they came yesterday. I love it. Yeah. And is that so, also volunteer ensemble? That's an auditioned group. You auditioned for mm -hmm. it. Okay. And it's grades 9 through 12. And this year we have about 20 kids in that group. Um, and it's vocal jazz an uh, acapella group where you guys join with like a rhythm section. Yes, we have rhythm section. Oh, cool. yep. oh, so oh, bass section are all yeah. And she's also our accompanist here. Great. And then we have a bass player and my husband's a drummer. So cool. they play they they do a lot of like jazz reharm stuff, not as much standards the past couple of years. They love like Carrie Marsh, crunchy yeah. harmony kind of stuff, Absolutely. which I think is why they love Sage yes. stuff a lot. Yeah. But we also do, you heard that response. These kiddos mm -hmm. have three, um, we have three acapella groups oh. that do pop stuff too. Wow. Yeah, so we're really excited to be together. And since we're just meeting each other for the first time, we are kind of prepared for this time to be whatever you want it yeah. to be. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah. Awesome. So well, welcome, you. let's say welcome. <laughs> Well, I'll give you a quick rundown so that it's not all one-sided. Uh, my name is Sarah. You can just call me Sarah. I am the newest hire at the Eastern School of Music. I was brought in to design the brand new Jazz Voice program there. So if you guys have questions about Eastman as a whole or um, the Jazz Voice program or just Jazz Voice as a degree generally, we probably won't talk about that much today, but don't hesitate to reach out to me either via social media or um, on the Eastman website. They have all the teacher's contact information. But if you want to know about anything related to college and music and school after this, don't hesitate to reach out because most collegiate level educators just want you to love music and to want to pursue it wherever that is and however that happens. So don't hesitate to reach out. Um, aside from Eastman, at the moment I live in Los Angeles. I've lived in LA for a really long time. Um, I am a solo jazz vocalist and I lead my own group and have been nominated for a couple Grammys just for my own music. But I also am in this group called Sage. And Sage um, has been nominated for two Grammys and just one for Best Arrangement Instruments and Vocals for our collaboration with Jacob Collier. That's a song from our most recent debut album that we self-produced, self-arranged, and self-released. Um, so we identify as independent female creators. Um, and also are all educators as well. Um, and we sort of inhabit this subset of, of the music world where we do all of our own arranging and also are performers and also love to teach. So we're happy to be out in the world communicating our love for this music to young people. Um, and I would say that we sort of exist in sort of more of the jazz, harmony, vocal music realm than the acapella world. Two of our members are like super heavy arrangers for acapella music. Uh, one of them is probably one of the more well-known um, like complex contemporary acapella music arrangers. Her name's Amanda Taylor. Um, if you guys are looking for repertoire, her stuff is probably the coolest, especially for like treble ensembles. Um, and then Aaron Bettledge is another one of our members who plays piano with Jacob Collier in his band and does a lot of arranging for the vocal world as well. 
So we're just doing our best, but um, I taught at USC for a long time and worked with the vocal jazz choir there um, and just love music education. So we're going to have a little bit of fun today. We're going to spend some time singing as a group and then we're going to talk a little bit about what differentiates jazz from other forms of music and give a crash course on vocal jazz concepts so that my people who are not in the vocal jazz ensemble can learn a little bit and feel engaged and like you're not just here watching a master class that has nothing to do with you. Does that sound good? And then maybe we'll leave some time at the end for any like big picture questions. But if at any point you're like, oh man, I really need to know, don't hesitate to just raise your hand. It doesn't have to be like a formal thing at the end of our hangout. Does that sound good? Okay, so let's talk a little bit about jazz. What is jazz music? It's like the question of the hour. I feel like a lot of times they ask me that in interviews and I'm like, all right, well yesterday I would have said this, but today I've got this one. But even just like, the most intuitive answer, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would say that that improv, improvisation differentiates jazz from a lot, a lot of other forms of music. Yeah. A lot of acoustic instruments. Yeah, definitely in kind of the more classic sounds of jazz, for sure. And maybe it's more like, uh, I would say there's like a breadth of, of emotion, right? Because some of it definitely feels calm and bluesy, but some of it's kind of like fiery and loud and fast, yeah. Um, like rooted in classical music, but then, yeah. So I would qualify that to say it's rooted in Black American music, so specifically American tradition and specifically from Black American creators that was then melded with classical music and music theory to make it sound and feel more complex, right? So that was sort of when it went from blues and into something different to sound like what we might associate with music academia's approach to jazz today, right? So definitely a fusion of a lot of different things, but rooted in the American experience, particularly the black American experience. What else? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so this idea of like bringing yourself to the music, right, which is not common in a lot of other forms of, of music. When I was in musical theater my senior year of high school, I was Meg Brocky and had to do like the same blocking and the same emotions every single time. But when I sang with the big band, I was just Sarah. And I had to think about, even just as a high school senior, how my life connected to that music, right? Which was really cool as a high school senior to feel like I had something I got to say and that people could identify with it. It was really validating for sure. What else? Yeah. It's yeah, there's like this specific feel that we associate with jazz music um, that is this, this idea of swing, right? So swing music, um, if you're going to break it down in a really academic sense, um, <laughs> is rooted in triplets, right? So triplets is where you have three beats in one beat. So if I'm going here, these are my quarter notes, and if I break it into three, Triplet, 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 triplet. And when you hear that, you kind of feel that triplet, 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 triplet. And if I drop the middle one, triplet, 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 triplet. And that's where we get that swing feel from, right? So again, that's like the most brainiac, cerebral way to describe what swing feel is. But it is a, a feel that we don't often feel in other forms of music, for sure. All right, so that's a lot of good stuff. Um, if someone were to say, as an artist, Sarah, how would you describe what is jazz? I would say jazz is the mastery of musical concepts with the purpose of expressing authentically the human experience in the moment. Right? And so those, like the melding of that is going to be different for every single person. So I'm someone who grew up in Seattle, Washington. I listened to Nirvana and Mariah Carey growing up. Those two things inform the kinds of music that I like, but I also love jazz. And so there's this intermelding of those influences plus music theory, uh, classical music, con uh, contemporary jazz, classic jazz, straight ahead jazz, all of these different worlds <coughs> to create the sound that I have as Sarah Gazzara. Plus, my function of instrument right, is different than Cecile McLaurin Salvant, Jasmine Horn, um, Ella Fitzgerald. Right? Our sounds are different. So unlike classical music, where it demands one voice to sound the same, and you're always chasing that sound and chasing that correctness and kind of manipulating your instrument to sound like that, jazz wants you to be the most authentic version 
the healthiest, most functional, masterful version of yourself so that I can express something that we all feel in a way that you see yourselves reflected in. So if I say to you guys, um, I have a dog and his name is Bear and he's an Australian Shepherd and he's really, really smart but the best part about Bear is that he's a total cuddle bug and he is just like wants to like be on you all the time. So most of you are looking at me and smiling and it's not because you like the fact that I'm happy talking about Bear. Very few of you are looking at me and thinking, oh, that's awesome, she's so happy, right? Like, wow, she loves her dog. Most of you are thinking, that is so cute. If I was in that position, I would love that. I would love a dog cuddling on me, right? So that's what musical exchange is. It's not you guys saying, wow, this is so good. Wow, um, that person is angry that their partner cheated on them. You're thinking like, man, if I was in my shoes, I would have burned the house down too. Right? Like you're empathizing and that's this human connection thing and we feel that when music is authentic and we're genuinely um, connected to it. Right? So that's the role of the jazz musician. If we're singing like in Latin and it's tone, the tone is, is balanced and the chords are balanced, sure, it's going to feel good and it's going to feel impressive, but is somebody going to think like, me too? Probably not. Right? So it's the me too thing that's so exciting about jazz. All right. Shall we sing? Yes. Let's have everybody stand up. Okay. No problem. I can put like I can project. So like I can even I can get a word document. Like if you want to draw, not really, but if you want to use like a text, I can put it up. Is this into a word type out? It's like a lyric thing. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're gonna do a scat warm up. <laughs> So what is scat? Who can tell me what scat relating to music and jazz music is? Yeah. Um, it's the imitation of jazz instruments, specifically like saxophone. Sure. Yeah. So it's like the it's it's the emulation of an instrument with your voice. So there there's no English words, right? So we're coming up with the syllables, but we are thinking about articulation, which is the variation of emphasis, right? So if I say we are thinking about articulation, blah 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 blah, right? You heard me emphasize certain things. I didn't say we are thinking about articulation, right? So there's no life in that one. We want there to be life because jazz is life. So what we're thinking when we do this is how can I bring life to this? And usually it's volume, right? So knowing that certain vowels are louder than others, ooh, do that with me, ooh, ah, ah, which one's louder? Ah. Yeah, ah is a lot louder, right? So if I go ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, that already has articulation in it, right? Try that with me. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, good, yeah, cool. Okay, so our exercise, oh, this is so great. Thank you. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, so which one do you guys think is going to be the quietest in that? Do. What do you guys think is going to be the loudest? Da. Da. Literally any of the ah ones, right? So what's different between the fa and fa fa? Yeah, there's the P, right? That means it's short. Same thing with dot, right? So the rhythm here, just listen twice and then join me. It goes like this. One, two, three. I want to listen, fa, 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 ba, do, da. Listen, fa, 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 ba, do, da. Join me. Fa, 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 ba, do, da. Good. Now let's emphasize everything other than the do. Listen one more time. One, two, three. Fa, 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 ba, do, da. Right? Do is so quiet. One, two, three. Fa. Ba, 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 do, da. Good, great. Now you can feel like there's a little articulation there, right? Okay, so that's the first line. The next one's a little longer. <coughs> fa, da, ba, do, ba, diddle, ya, do, be, ah. Okay. Ba da ba do ba diddle ya do be a. Listen again. Ba da ba do ba diddle ya do be a. Listen one more time. 
Fada badu badu yadu bea with me. Fada badu badu yadu bea. Good. The do is quiet, right? One. Listen again. Fada badu badu yadu bea with me. Fada badu badu yadu bea again. Fada badu badu yadu bea again. Fada badu badu yadu bea. Good. Cool. So this guy, the ul, is also probably a little quiet, right? Did ya do bea. So we can emphasize this and come back a little quieter there. So if we just listen to the whole thing, ba 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 da ba da ba do ba did ya do bea. With me, whole thing ba 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 do da ba da ba do ba did ya do bea again. Cool. Okay, great. So in jazz, we want to emphasize that upbeat instead of the downbeat. And that's a big differentiation between classical and jazz, right? So if I'm thinking one, two, three, four, I'm snapping on two and four because those are kind of the upbeats of that four bar or four beat phrase, right? So we're snapping on one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And if I'm thinking one, two, three, four, fa, fa, right? Those upbeats are the ones we want to emphasize. Fa, 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 ba, do, da. All of those upbeats are the ones that are going to get a little bit more volume. So if I'm going a little slower, here are my quarter notes. Fa, 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 ba, do, da. The upbeats are the ones we want to make even more emphasized. So just watch my hands. Fa, 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 ba, do, da. Right? See how that's even more articulated? And then we go in the longer line. Fa, da, ba, do, ba, do, ya, do, be, ya. Make sense? Let's go slow and do it while watching my hands. Three, four. Fa, 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 ba, do, da. Good. So this one wants to be emphasized, but we can't because that's a downbeat, right? Try it again. Just that second half. Three. Again. Good job. All right, guys. Everybody's in jazz choir now. So this is how this melody goes. Just a little minor melody. So just listen twice. Listen one more time. Feel good? Let's try it together. One, two, three. Great. Okay, let me hear you guys do that twice without moving. One, two, three. I know it's scary when we add melody, but don't forget that articulation stuff you guys mastered before we added that. Okay, try it again one more time. One, two, three. Fa, 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 ba, do, da. Good. Let's go like other end of the spectrum, wacky, corny, with how hard we are articulating these dynamics. So if I want it to sound like ba, 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 da, ba, da, ba, do, ba, ya, do, ba, ya. See how that feels. Okay, one, two, three. Ba, 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 do, da. Cool. Okay, so now we're going to do a call and response version of this. So this side of the room, do what we've just done. This one we're going to wait a little bit to come in after they've sung this, and then we sing a, a harmony to this. 
okay? So sing quietly, I'll sing your part twice, and then you guys can join in. Fa, fa, one, two, three. Fa, fa, ba, ba, do, fa, ba, ba, do, da, fa, da, ba, do, ba, do, ya, do, ba, ya. So it's just like thirds above, right? So you just wait, sing the same thing that they sang, and then jump up a third, okay? Listen one more time, and then we'll do it again with you with me, okay? One, two, three. Fa, fa, ba, ba, do, fa, da, ba, do, da, Join this time. Again. So the scat syllables are the same, even though we're coming in late. Fa 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 ba do. We come in here though. Oh, no, they are different. Sorry. You're right. Fa, da, fa, do, da. Okay. Fa, 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 ba, do, fa, da, ba, do, da. Let's try it again. One, two, three. Fa, 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 ba, do, fa, da, ba, do, da. Fa, da, ba, do, ba, do, da, do, do, ba, da. Oh, great. Okay. So then we move up in half steps, just like a normal warm up, right? But the thing that we're warming up here is not our voices. We're thinking more about articulation and swing feel. So I'm just standing there thinking like, relax my jaw, right? I might as well be doing ah, right? So this one, fa, 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 ba, da. We want to have a good time with this one, thinking about rhythm and articulation, okay? Let's go a little lower first. Do you want to play piano? Yeah, I'd love to. So it's just like minor and then the last two beats of the master bar. Perfect. Dominant seven. Sounds great. The fifth. Thank yeah. you. B flat minor first. Perfect. Yeah. Five. One, two, one, two, three. Dot? How would you guys describe the word dot? Like, what does it sound like? What does it feel like? Pointy. Pointy, there's a period. Round. Does it feel skinny? Does it feel heavy? Yes. Dot. Like a punch. If I say dot versus ditch, which one feels fatter? Dot. 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 This one's fat. Wide and dropped. So instead of fa, 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 ba, do, dot, right? That's almost this. Fa, 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 ba, do, dot. I want us to fall into the weight of the end of that line. Fa, da, ba, do, dot. Ba, da, ba, do, ba, do, ya, do, ba, ya. Right? And then we'll modulate ba, ah, the last two beats. Okay? Let's go back to C minor. One, two, one, two, three. Swing warm up. Who's out, everybody? We are done with the whole group at what time? Uh, about 10 after 10. Okay, cool. About 15. Great. Can we do a song that everybody does together? With the big group? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so that these are the kiddos that 
Like, do you want to hear them do something? I mean, are they, are you guys so, all in this group Okay, too? so yes. vocal jazz has a couple of things they could sing for you. Yeah. If you want to hear everybody, then they're the ones that have that um, reharm of times they are changing. Yeah. Yes. Or vocal jazz can sing some yeah. different. And then I have a little but bit more jazz vocal jazz, jazz, right? Yeah. 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 So just for funsies, I would love for everybody to sing Times They Are Changing. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, do you need your music? It's like half Yeah, if you need your music, grab it. Okay. 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 Well, if you're all spread out, are you okay? Okay. All right. Here we go. Let's try it. overwhelmed and almost cried not just by how beautiful it was but like how special it is to hear so many young people passionately engaging in music and an arrangement that's so like sophisticated it's it's a big undertaking to impact this many lives and it I feel like I was watching it happen in real time so thank you so much for your dedication to create music and young people and thank you guys for engaging in music in a way that feels like like, I'm watching lives change in real time, which is very, really exciting to me. 
Okay, so let's dig deep with this really quickly in the few minutes that we have with the whole group. Two things I would charge you guys with, and this is an investigation that you would have as an entire ensemble. How much music do we want to make here? So if we're just performing, it's in great shape. It sounds beautiful, the arrangement is great, the performance feels good. Uh, Miss Stabell is doing a real, is that right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> doing a great job with shaping and kind of getting us to do something with it so that it feels like it's good, you know? Like it feel like if I was a parent, I'd be like, you guys did great. But if I don't know you, and I haven't just spent 40 minutes getting to know you guys, what am I feeling? Am I having that, oh my gosh, I want to cuddle with the dog moment? Or am I just having a, this is good moment, right? And in music and in any kind of art, I always want the first one. Because that's how you engage humanity, right? And that's the purpose of art. So how do we get there? The first charge is, what's my relationship with the song? So who can tell me if this is a happy or a sad song? <laughs> Bittersweet? It's a little bit of both? Yeah. Okay, so what's a buzzword that we would use to describe the big picture and motion of this song? Yeah. Hopeful. Hopeful. Do we all agree with hopeful? Yeah. Hopeful. Cool. So my face when I'm communicating something hopeful that's also bittersweet is really different than my face if I'm communicating anger or frustration or love, right? Those are really different faces because my feeling is actually different. It's not acting. I'm actually thinking about hope and inspiration, but something that's bittersweet. So I would charge you guys with doing the homework of figuring out what that is for you in this song. Like, my name is Sarah, and for me, the last time I felt hopeful was thinking about a young female identifying or non-binary composer watching Sage win a Grammy in the composition category, for which only three women have ever won in the last 61 years. That made me hopeful. So that's my face when I'm thinking and singing in this song, right? That's number one. Number two is getting to a point where Miss Stabell is not singing or not conducting you. Because then there's nothing to look at and it's just you connecting with this and sharing it with your audience. So I want to see what happens if we try it without Miss Stabell in front of you. If we're constantly listening for the melody, because a lot of times I think we're just singing because it's our part instead of like, Who's the soloist here? Can we bring it down to a volume where we hear the soloist? Can we bring it to a volume where we hear the person who's singing the lead, even if they're not a soloist? If I'm just singing my part, then I'm not singing the chart, right? So let's try the beginning one more time and bring that volume down like 40% more so that when it gets louder in that next chorus, we all want to erupt in tears, okay? <coughs> This is it, ish? Okay. So we're already thinking about our emotion of the song. That hopeful thing.
about the first version versus that version? What was different for you? Yeah. I think the second version, we were really more like listening to each other, which I think made us more like, I feel like it really brought out our emotions more, and yeah. it felt more like we were actually like singing it instead of just singing the words. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot more movement and like pushed forward. Like it felt like it was really moving forward, and before it kind of just felt more flat. Sure. Yeah. I think I would some of <laughs> That's good. Anything else? Yeah. I feel like instead of like pushing the pushing the structure, just like say, like okay, you can start this too hard. I'll just do it. We were more like collaborating with each other and sort of being like, okay, this is how I feel in the moment. This is how I'm going to express it. Yeah. Yeah, so you can't do what we just did unless you do what you guys have been doing. And you have to do that. You have to get to a point where everything is unified so that you can then lift the roof off, right? And express something in the moment. And that takes a lot of courage, and it takes a lot of responsibility on the part of the ensemble. <clears throat> so I would say as a teacher, I wouldn't give that gift of making music and collaborating if the students haven't done the work to get the music to the point where I can step back and just say, okay, I trust you, communicate what you're feeling. Right? But we've all probably seen the videos of that little like fifth grade choir in New York where they're just like swaying and singing and they're so in it. But it's just because they're communicating what's inside of their hearts and having that permission to do that is something that a lot of a lot of young people don't get, right? But also the reminder that it's not just a bunch of people singing at the same time. There are people that we have to be listening to, there are dynamics within the within the chart, and these are all things that I'm sure you guys have talked about. But it's just a matter of whether or not you have somebody screaming at you to do it in the moment, right? Uh, this is beautiful. Congratulations. Thank you so much for all of your guys' hard work. This is really, really wonderful. Thank you. Thank you.